G'day fellas, and welcome to the Outback Octagon. This is game number two of your first week of the Outback Octagon. And what a surprise we have today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your first water map. It is happening. We've got town centers beginning to come up over the map and core of all people has decided to place his on an island. Well, 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 Core. You've got plenty of gold, you've got plenty of stone, but you don't seem to have a whole lot of wood, do you there, Core? No, indeed you don't, but you shouldn't be surprised because this is Core, and if there's anybody you're expecting to do well this game, well, it's not Core. It is not Core. I'm just kidding, it's Core. We love Core. Spawn again. As the blue player, it is, of course, Core, who is playing as the Mongols. Coming up next... We have got, I'm just going to roll through it like this. We've got I am Averly, who has spawned in as the English in the purple. He's going to be dropping a town center down somewhat central, a little bit over towards that western location, a second villager out towards the eastern side. It's already met with a wolf. Second villager did make its way back in. Over towards the north, spawning in as the Holy Roman Empire. In the yellow. We've got Crackety here. In a very good spot. He's got a nice little pocket position for himself. He's dropped down a house, a lumber camp, but he's got problems nearby. He's got Divine, who is right next to him. He's also got a second villager over on this deer hunt. Over on the water. Over on the water's edge. Next up, spawning in as the green French player. Already researching wheelbarrow. It's Puppy Paw. Of course it's Puppy Paw. He gets his wheelbarrows before he gets his town centers. That is Puppy Paw. He's famous for it. Second villager has come in. Third villager out on the gold. Nice little spot for him up there. And he can already see all of those trading posts on his minimap already. He knows exactly where they are. Next up, we've got spawning in as the Teal Abbasid Dynasty player. We have got Divine DFP. And he has managed to find every single one of his villagers and bring them back towards this southern position. The next up, we've got from South Korea. As the English. Lee Noku, aka the Lee Octopus. We got him in here. He is playing some free for all. Now, obviously, there's a lot of communicating in this game. Now, I've, I've spoken plenty with Lee Nock in real life. His English is absolutely fine. He will be A-OK -okay in this in this game. Because remember, alliances can be formed and alliances can be broken. And that may indeed be the case here. As he's got a beautiful spot by the shoreline here. Unfortunately, not a lot of fish for him, though. So that is definitely going to suck. But we've already got a mill coming down for him with a couple of farms. But let's go check in with our next player. We have got Simtom coming in as our Red Mongol player. That is Symptom. For anybody unfamiliar with Symptom, I take you back to Genesis. I take you back to the very first round of Genesis where Symptom went up against the Viper in a best of one game. And he almost beat the Viper and knocked him out. Now, there are a lot of good players who were knocked out in the early rounds of Genesis. I wouldn't hold it against the Viper if it happened to him. Um, I, I don't want to talk too much about it. So we'll just move on to our next player. We have got... It is going to be... That is not Zertan. That is Zertan, who is spawning in over on the south side. And he is playing the Abbasid Dynasty as well. So we've got ourselves a little bit of double Abbasid Dynasty going on right here. Very, very interesting. Both players, again, on the south side, the Abbasid Dynasty players. A little bit of an alliance potentially could form. Maybe we've got a united Abbasid Kingdom coming in once again. But it's going to be Zertan on the color pink. And next up... We've uh, have we have we, we've already talked about Avery, so that is that is your eight players. So interestingly, we've got them gravitating down towards the south this game. So we've got one, two, three, four players all down in the southern region, all around here. So there's going to be a lot of fighting in this early game. A lot of them are early game civs as well. We've got the English as well as the French. Very cool indeed. Looks like a little bit of fishing going to be happening over here. Puppy Paw has managed to locate the dock of Crackety. Now. A new Khan has risen. Apparently, apparently the Khan went... No. Oh, the Khan... <laughs> Look at this. We got Kor on an island just chilling out by himself. He's managed to find wood, though. I mean, this is the only wood that he's got. So it's going to be a bit of a... <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a struggle. He's spending his only wood on a dock. Mm. It's going to be... It's going to be quite some time before Kor manages to get out of fishing boat. I mean, he's getting there, though. He's getting there. Kor, I like your thinking. I like the strategy. I like how everything's gone for you so far in this game, but I am worried. I'm worried. I think the best thing that Core can do is try and get a transport ship across to, like, 
a forest because there, there's actually not a lot of wood on this map. In the first game, if you did watch that video, uh, there was a lot of wood on that map. In this version, there doesn't seem to be a lot of wood. So it is, uh, let's just say, it's, it's a little bit spicy. Boar going down over for Symptom, though. That is a very nice pickup for him. He's managed to keep most of his villagers on relatively good health numbers. We can see this one took a fair beating. This one, not so much. This one, an, an, in, an intermediate amount, a, a medium amount. And we hear those scouts calling out. It's those Abbasid scouts once again calling out. It must be a bug for the Abbasid scouts. Their calls go across the entire map. Oh, never mind. It's the English that do it as well. I don't know exactly how it works, but scout calls... <laughs> they are absolutely everywhere. So, starting off this game, taking a look at the civilizations, there's going to be some civilizations here that are, I guess you would consider them better when it comes to free-for-all. So, as an example, the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, oh, look what we got here. We got ourselves a little bit of a transport ship already. Kor getting off his home island wasn't going towards that fishing boat. No, no, no. Drongo was wrong. It was indeed something a little bit different. Why are these guys walking all the way down here? You guys have a, a dock right there. Drop off at the dock. What are you doing? Uh, but uh, yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about... Um, hold on. I, I just want to... We'll follow along with Kor's transport ship for now. Um, but uh, I guess the, the thing for me is that you're typically going to be having different civilizations in this game that aren't necessarily the same way that they happen in 1v1. And so in 1v1, you've definitely got a hierarchy of civs. Uh, but in, in free-for-all, it's, it's completely different. So I think that... Crackety has got a very good spawn. He's also got a really strong civilization, the Holy Roman Empire. Now, when it comes to relics, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's got too much on his side of the map. We do see there's a relic down to the south, a second relic down here as well, a relic in the middle. There's also a relic over on Kors Island. And the fifth and final relic, is it down here? Nope. I'm looking. I'm looking. It's right here. So I think there's only five relics that spawn on Mega Random, even though there's eight players. So not a lot of relics. Uh, so... As the Holy Roman Empire play, he's not going to have a huge amount of gold trickling into him. Uh, in addition to that, he doesn't have a lot of gold up on his side. He's got two golds that spawn close to him, and then he's got a third gold a little bit closer towards the center. But other than that, it's going to be tough for him. When it comes to the trading posts as well, if we take a look at our French player, Puppy Paw, uh, you can see where those trading posts are. And they're all down towards the south. One, two, three. And then the final trading post is quite literally a trading post on the island of Kor. It's not a water trading post. It is an island trading post. So unless you want to start doing some sort of highway between these two, uh, it, it's going to be difficult for you. Um, but I'm sure Kor will be happy with that. I, I suspect he'll be doing some, bi some big trades. Actually, there's a second relic there for Kor and a sacred site. So Kor's going to be pretty happy with this. Like th That's 300 gold a minute right there. That's pretty good. I think Kor's in a good spot, right? Like, I'm actually thinking about it. What if Kor on this island drops a wonder and then makes a thousand Baoshwans and he just camps all of the water with Baoshwans and then no one can get onto the water because he just kills them all? What if that Kor? You got to Kor. You got to do that. You got to do that. You got it. You got to do it for us. That that's what that's that's my hope. So I guess when it comes to like positions in the late game, who's in the best spot? It, it probably goes to Crackety. That's a really good spot, obviously. Uh, he's also got a very nice narrow... What would you call that? Like a bit of a peninsula up towards that northern position. Uh, and then I, I unironically think Cause is quite good as well. He's got a lot of resources on here. I mean, he's got enough space for a Mongol base. Like you could have 100 villagers here, very, or 200 villagers easily. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, other than that, it's going to be difficult for him. But we can see food economies or, or fishing economies actually starting to build up for our French player as well as our Holy Roman Empire player down on this south side. Uh, we'll take a look and see what these guys are up to as we do actually have Puppy Paw opening with the School of Cavalry. So a little bit of a rarity to see that in uh, in these these free-for-all games. Normally, you actually do see the Chamber of Commerce come through. But it looks like stone being gathered. So a second town center probably going to be the option here for Puppy Paw early. We'll take a look and see how our Abbasid players are doing down at the bottom. Typically, these guys... Abbasid players, in in my experience of in free for alls, are very passive, very very passive. Like to play for the late game. Now keep in mind they do have those trading posts that are nearby, uh, so they're always going to be able to look towards that trade. But now we hear all those scout calls going off slowly but steadily. Scouts make their way around the map. Lee knock with a nice little spot in here as well. Listen to all the scout calls going off. That's actually wild. I wonder if there's any way I can turn that off. 
Actually, I think there is. I can't remember exactly how it is. But we, we've now got the landmark coming through. Kor has decided to put... <laughs> Kor has decided to put his landmark over on mainland. He's decided to go against this whole concept of an island nation. Uh, interestingly, he's going to need to try and get towards that 900... Um, 900 wood so that he can actually get himself a decent amount of, uh, of villages on the mainland. The problem is that it's going to take him a long while to do it. I think he might just be going fast castle, but I, I, I think the question is like, what's the point? Actually, you know what he could do? He could... Actually, that's a smart move. Hey, Court, can you just move your town center over slightly, please? It, it's going to take you like five seconds. It'll save you in the long run a lot of a lot of hard work. Come on, Court. I, I, I like to believe that you could move it. Core. Core continues scouting out the map. We see Averly is now reached into the feudal age. We'll take a look at how he's doing. He's got a couple of gold miners up towards the north, stone down towards the south. It looks like he's going to be stacking up for that second town center. It is coming down a second English town center. He's scouted out plenty of people around him. And we now see that silver tree moving towards the north. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a silver tree. Simtom is going to be opening it up nice and early and moving it into position. You can see he's going to have a free run down towards here. In fact, he's already got traders out. Take a look at this. We've got 62 gold on these bad boys, but they're now in position in a very decent spot. Let's have a look. These ones are still on 62 gold. The next ones, I suspect, are going to be on a very high amount. Crackety now reaching Castle Age as well. Keep in mind, Crackety, he's on that northern side. Doesn't really have a good spawn with regard to relics, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Burgrave. We'll take a look and see if we can spot that landmark. It is a Regnitz. It's in the back of the base. What? What did you just say to me? There you go. There you go. <laughs> that is ridiculously loud. A little, a few idle villages underneath the town center. Trade continuing on. We'll check in with the traders of Simtom. I want to see. Yeah, 152 gold coming in for Simtom on these traders now. That is a really decent amount. We'll take a look up towards... I'm, I'm kind of tempted to look towards Kor's uh, northern position, but look at what Puppy Paw is doing. He is walling off absolutely everything right now. He's walled off his enemy over towards the west and continues to wall up towards the north. He's scouted all of this out and now puts walls up completely. But I think the best part in this is no one knows where Kor is. And I genuinely think Kor could become an island nation. He could legitimately make his wonder over here, keep his town center up, and then just like make fill it up with, with outposts and just bow chads absolutely everywhere. And it, it would be insane. How, how do you even stop that? I don't actually know. But I guess the, the big thing is he's going to need a place on land to call his home because he's only got two villages there at the moment. Lenok and Divine now reaching the Castle Age. We see that second landmark getting placed down for Lenok. Uh, but you can't help but feel it's a little bit close as I hear. Battering Rams coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves a little bit of action over towards the south side. And it turns out today that our Abbasid allies are no longer allies. Well, you know what? Maybe they were never allies to begin with as their scouts continue to call out. We'll, we'll ride on board with Divine as he looks to defend. Now, keep in mind, Divine has managed to reach the Castle Age, but he is under attack from many different angles. We see Zerton pushing in with a Dow. He's also got a, a big, big push coming in from this north side as well. He is housed currently. This isn't looking good right now for Divine. It's definitely difficult when he's not playing the French to try and pull something together. I'm just kidding, Divine. I love you. <laughs> but seriously, the French are really good. Uh, <laughs> Divine now uh, really going to be under trouble with that second battering ram coming in. Keep in mind the French... Uh, the French. Keep in mind, uh, Zerton is still in Age 2. Uh, so this is an Age 2 push. So there's a good chance that Knights could come out here. And we do see the first Lancer making its way out onto the field. Two more stables on the backside as well. And this should be able, or should be capable of cleaning this up as the third battering ram now comes down. Village is going to be pulled from this position. No textiles in just yet. We'll take a look over at how Symptom and his traders are doing. They continue making their ways, actually going for a, uh, a prayer tent, as well as looking to expand out that YAM network. We see the outpost bringing it down. But now, towards the south side of the map, Zerton is under early, or he's, uh, he's applying some early pressure. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. As he's now getting the spear upgrade as well, he realizes that Lancers are going to be out here. So I suspect he's going to be looking to reinforce with plenty of those bad boys. Still no phalanx upgrade yet for him. Uh, but looking to try and secure a little bit of early presence out here. No second town center for him. He is definitely intent on causing harm early in this game as the battering rams continue battering down the houses. Things are looking good for Zerton at this point. More lancers coming out. He's doing quite a fair bit of damage. We'll ride on board with Divine and see exactly what he's up to. And he's, he's actually down to housed. And that's not a good position to be. 
Needs to focus down the spears with the town center. You can see the town center firing down on these spears. Needs to be able to kill them. Village is now going to be forced away. Keep in mind, there's only one town center here. He went one TC fast castle. So no second town center for our Abbasid players at this stage. And really, it's not looking good right now for Divine as he continues on the run. Core also reaching the castle age. Congratulations, Core. You've made it to the rest of the... Um, with the rest of the world. I mean, I, I say that, but we've still got two players in feudal at this point. We've got Averly over towards the north, who's booming up. He's got his third town center out at this point in time. And of course, we've we've got Zerton, who is pushing quite hard, pushing quite fast, and now under a lot of pressure. These spearmen continue to funnel in. The battering ram's going to be turning their attention towards that town center as well. A couple of farms going to be going down, and Divine looking like he might be on the edge. Zerton looking to claim some of those early points. Realize that he's got an immediate threat and that he needs to take it out. But at the same time, we hear that stone outpost towards the north with his spring going to be firing down. Lenok looking to secure up that gold. And Zerton seems A-OK -okay with it. He's looking to claim these points on the south side and then move on. But now we've got knights as well as villagers getting in on the mix. Lancers are actually doing a pretty decent job here of staying alive. No upgrades for them, but they're going to be able to push through and clean up these archers. I suspect villagers are going to be losing their lives as well. We'll tune in with Divine and see how he's doing. He's down to 24 villagers at this point. Keep in mind the Dow from Zerton has been doing a very good job of cleaning up all of his water economy as well. And now the Lance has managed to clean this up, but at what cost? 23 villagers remain for him. Compare that over to Zerton right now, and he's got 47. So double the economy, and that's going to really put him out in a terrible position. Village is going to be able to evacuate now, looking to try and take out the town center, or looking to try and take out the battering rams before the town center goes down. A couple more archers going to be coming in. It looks like Divine is going to be able to hold on at this early stage of the game. Villagers make their way back towards the town center. We'll check in with him. Looks like wood insufficiencies may actually become a reality here as he climbs down towards that zero mark. And indeed, we are get ready to see it. Boom, baby. Insufficient wood. It is the message you never want to see. The message you never want to hear. Lenok now capturing up sacred sites. We'll ride on board with our Korean friend and see how he is doing. We hear Crackety reaching the Imperial Age. 17 minutes. Not a bad little time considering we are on Nomad as well. He gets our Palace of Swabia up and running. Things are looking good for Crackety in the north. Back towards the south side, though. Lenok found himself between, I would say, a rock and a hard place, but it's, it's more like a body of water and a hard place. Because he's got... I mean, he's, he's got some good sacred site coverage down here. And just to take a look at the sacred sites right now, uh, there are three sacred sites that are out and about on this map. So we've got our first one, our second one, and of course our third one, which belongs to the one, the only, Core. He's got his prayer tent out as well. So looking to capture up those relics and we start to see outposts coming down. Puppy Paw has actually got a Hulk out in this bottle, this bottle of water, this body of water. A second Hulk out here. Actually, no, that's a transport ship. But uh, we've got... Quite a fair bit of units that are beginning to come out, neutralizing this position as well. Down towards the south, we continue uh, to see plenty of action as more and more units coming out. Zertan in age 2 is going to be really looking to push his enemy up against the wall. And we see Lenok is going towards the Imperial Age. The Wingard Palace is being dropped down. So while these two guys are fighting out next to each other, we've literally got Lenok just going all in on Imperial at the same time. He hits Imperial at 18 minutes. I suspect we're going to see a Wingard army and enclosures coming out almost immediately. He's on 73 villagers. And now it looks like Simtom going to be running in and looking to try and get some scraps here as Divine is under pressure early. This isn't looking good for him. Divine actually going to be calling in some reinforcements. Look at this. Simtom actually saying, hey, I'll help you out. No! Simtom turning around upon his opponent and saying, hey, I'm actually going to take you out. Divine under real significant threat. And now this is something that I talk about quite a bit. Wait, are these two working together? Do we have an alliance? Is it is it Zertan together with Simtom that are working together? Ideally, what Divine needs to do right now is he needs to call this out. He needs he needs to he needs to call this out. Relics have been picked up by Kor. He's managed to take two. Sacred Sight is now going to be taken as well. Keep in mind that Hulk is out. Down towards the south, we'll take a look because this House of Wisdom is going down. Now remember, you get points based on the last hit. If we can't determine who gets the last hit, then it goes over half and half. And now it gets to the point where Puppy Paw reaches the Imperial Age. Divine surrenders. And so with that, you would almost be tempted to give full points over to Zerton. But at the same time, Symptom is here attacking. So we'll, we'll hand it over to our admins. Our admins will determine who, who, who those points go over to. Uh, but I do suspect it will probably be to Zerton. We can see that uh, that Symptom is continuing to attack down this House of Wisdom despite uh, despite uh, uh, despite Divine actually being knocked out. 
And now Zerden actually going to turn his attention towards the the units here of Symptom. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on. These these guys here, I thought they were friends, but it turns out they're actually frenemies. They're still fighting over the landmark, it seems. Just very intent on, on causing it. But I mean, at, at, at this point in time, I guess this is probably something that we need to clarify in the rules and we'll make sure that we get something a bit more specific at this point because I don't know about you guys chat but watching this you would obviously attribute the death here almost a hundred percent to Zerton you, you would say that sure symptom came in at the end and that's something that we do want to promote that that concept of last hitting uh, but good game was called before the last hit could be given and as a result, you've got to determine that based on the percentages. So I think Zerton's probably going to pick up 100% of the points there. But we'll clarify that with the admins. But now, looks like Simtom, he, he's he's not had enough. He said, well, I, I, I went down to try and attack that that first guy. He just tapped out immediately. Now you're next, Lee Nock. And he moves in towards that villager line. Villagers continue going down. On the rest of the map, you can see that we've got a continued expansion up towards the north. And it looks like a town center is going to be happening for core. He's finally managed to make his way over towards that position, but Symptom is really looking to capitalize here on his position. Divine has been cracked out, and now he's looking to try and take out the next player. So we've got Zerton taking out the first one, and Zerton's going to be happy with himself, and with that, expanding straight away, getting down that second town center and saying, now I can focus. First landmark going down. It is going to be that King's Palace, and we might have some problems right now. Lenok under attack. We can see there's a huge amount of horsemen, a huge amount of knights in here, and Lenok went straight up to Imperial. Has really failed to make a lot of units. Ideally for Lenok, you'd love to see a keep come out. We'll ride on board with Simtom and see how he's doing. You can see the economy behind this is absolutely massive. The consequence of having this this beautiful trade network that he's got. Only s this one's got 341 gold on it. 341 gold. In what world are you getting 341 gold? What? That is ludicrous. Some of these are. This guy's doing 152. How is this guy doing 152 and this guy's doing 300? Oh, this guy's traveling all the way down here. Oh, damn, girl. Damn. Lenox base, though. Lenox under attack. I mean, we're over here admiring. Uh, we're <laughs> over here admiring the uh, the trade route. Meanwhile, Lenox dying. Lenox dying, and he might actually get forced out here. This is not good. Simtom hits Imperial Age. He's dropped down that landmark. Third landmark goes down here. Symptom looking to actually claim a potential victim at this early stage of the game. He's looking very strong with this Lancer Mass, and the Mongols is coming out in force today, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, not all Mongol players are made even. That is correct. Some of them, they're a little bit special, aren't they? They're a little bit special. But we'll check out exactly how Lenok is doing, because unfortunately for Lenok, he is sealed as the seventh player in this game. The second one to go out... Good game, Lee Nock. Well played. Uh, it was a nice, fast Imperial strategy. It's one that I've I've worked out myself plenty of times. It's the classic fast Imperial into GG. It goes well, but unfortunately, it didn't go well enough for you today. F's in the chat for Lee Nock. A sad, sad loss. But now it sounds like we've got potential raids up towards the north. Scout going to be scouting out. And we've got some interesting walls coming down for Averly. Averly also reaching the Imperial Age. And now the question... Oh, okay. Abley doing a lot better than Lenok with regard to his uh, his military numbers. Knights coming out in quite a significant amount uh, up towards... We've, we've got the Khan just doing Khan things. Symptom, of course, with the Khan. A little bit of a raid down here on the trade line was coming through. You can see those traders are still coming in. But it looks like this is going to get cleaned up for the most part. Symptom doing a decent job. Core reaching the Imperial Age as well. Core, congratulations. Welcome to the Imperial Age with the rest of the world. Great to see you here. And uh, and we can hear that the Khan has gone down for Symptom. Quite a lot of units out for him. We can see the elite upgrades coming through. He's got biology. He's got precision crossbreeding. He's got cannon emplacements. I feel like Symptom knows exactly what he's doing here on the Mongols. He's going to be very happy with this civilization pick. Zerton now reaches the Castle Age. He's finally made it up as well. Now, remember, Zerton, obviously, in the early game, fought heavily and hard against his compatriot down here, the Abbasid player, Divine. But unfortunately, Divine was the weaker of the two Abbasids and did, unfortunately, tap out. Over to... <laughs> look at this. Hold on a minute. We've got Averly over here who's just walled in completely on this front. Have we got ourselves a little bit of an alliance going on? Puppy Paw and Averly... Sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. What is going on here? Now, P 
Puppy Paw knows about this because Averly's cut through and yet he permits it to carry on. He permits it to continue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Those Bombard emplacements are insane. Where did the Bombard cannon go? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, we have an alliance. We have an alliance that just formed. The deleting of the Bombard cannon indicates that we've got an alliance that's formed. Zerton said, hey man, can you kill that? More units moving in through the middle. We have got our first confirmed alliance down towards the south. It is Zerton playing as the Abbasid and the Mongol player Simtom have formed an alliance on the south side and look to begin to take over the game. The question is going to be whether they can because there are a lot of players in this game, including Crackety, who is currently trying his best to hold on in the center. Upgrades are slowly coming through for Simtom. Crackety, unfortunately, yet to get any upgrades. Bombard's all going to be going down for him. We'll ride on board with Crackety now and see how he's doing. He's up to 106 villagers. Keep in mind, he's got that Palace of Swabia that is unfortunately not burning enough right now. He's getting a whole lot of upgrades through. We'll take a look from his perspective and see exactly what he sees. There was a keep here on this sacred site that did eventually uh, get neutralized. Now, unfortunately, I don't think you can capture these keeps. I don't know if there's a way to do it. I remember someone saying that you could, like, you put a unit inside the building and, and then it, it, it captures, but I don't know how to do that, but that'd be pretty cool to, cap to capture. We'll take a look over at Core's base as well and, and see what uh, what he's looking like. Plenty of barracks is coming up there. So we'll ride on board with Core for a bit. Core is definitely... Oh, no, ladies and gentlemen. We might have ourselves a little bit of a bow chad coming through. Have a look at this. And remember, Core's got infinite stone. That's one of the things to note. You know, everybody else has got to be over there, like, slowly gathering. Oh, actually, no, stone doesn't matter for, for the Mongols. They don't make their uh, them their landmarks with stone. They make it with wood and food and gold. They're, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit special. You can see right there. 8,000 of each. Eh. Eh. It's easy. It's, it's no fuss. We'll take a look over towards this eastern position. As you can see, this has been actually neutralized. So we've got our second confirmed alliance. It is Puppy Paw, it is Averly. They are together because Puppy Paw could have come in and killed this easily. He could have completely destroyed that. He didn't. He moved on. And Puppy Paw has been very quiet. Despite his central location, he's done a great job. And now we see Bombards moving out in the middle of the map, or cannons rather, actually heading down. And th this could actually be very dangerous. Zerton under significant threat down towards the south. Villagers here going to be dropping down that forward keep. The Bombards on the same side. I'm not liking this position for Zerton. I think this might be a good game just from the fact that there's so much siege back here protected by this keep. This could be terrible. And there, there's plenty of action happening over this map right now, but he's going to continue pushing through. House of Wisdom is going to go down. Next one up, it's that Capital Town Center. And remember, this is the weakness of the Abbasid when it comes to free for all. One of the biggest weaknesses that the Abbasid have is they've only got two landmarks. So it means if you get caught in early battles, like he did, that you get pushed behind. And as a result, we now see Puppy Paw picking up two points as he taps out Zerton. Good game, well played. Zerton goes down in sixth place in this game. And there was only five. Currently, we've got Simtom who is breaking away on a bit of a point lead. He's sitting on 11,000. Puppy Paw right in the rear with the gear sitting on 10,000. And Simtom continuing to move out on the map with a bit of a raid. So at the moment, we've got Puppy Paw who has just taken out Zerton's ally. So the question is, does, does Puppy Paw and his alliance with Averly get realized? by Symptom, because Symptom was in a, in a very decent position to potentially take out this English player. And I wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw like a run by or two come through. But you can see from the base building of Averly, it's actually very smart. He's got the, the keep that's right next to this main town center, and that's going to be able to provide boiling oil as well as the cannon emplacement throughout the game. But it looks like we've got a breakthrough now coming in. A whole bunch of elite lancers going to be jumping in up against these elite royal knights. No biology upgrade coming through for them just yet, or as the English have or rather, the French have royal bloodlines. No, sir, not today. But now that push really going to come through. A lot of Abla Trier on the back here as well. So you've got to be very careful not to be eaten alive by those because they will absolutely destroy you. He does have that incendiary upgrade as well. Incendiary arrow upgrade, rather. Uh, so uh, we can see that he's got scouts in the mix as well. No car, uh, interestingly. Uh, looks like a Mongol villager as well is there. I, I did see a villager. Might have been a villager coming out from, uh, from Puppy Paw. But up towards the north, I mean, we can see there's just so much action going on. Core's actually done a great little job to, to, you know, get himself some wood over here. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a wonder coming out from him. I really wouldn't. I think Core's in a very decent spot here for an island wonder. 
Uh, and and that <laughs> it, it it could be it could be something of beautiful. Look at the Bausch ones that he's building up as well. This could be insane because he would be able to push out, establish complete dominance of the shoreline, hold with the Bausch ones, keep the wonder up, and then just guarantee that he holds that position because no one can push in. Like you, when you consider the range that's on those bad boys, it is insanity. We got to find those lancers, lancers and scouts almost completely cleaned up. There's three scouts that remain. Uh, we'll take a look at the Bausch ones and see what the range is on these guys. So they've got a range of nine tiles. So your Springled has got 12 range, and the Springled will effectively counter them. So it's a fair range difference, but the problem is the Bausch ones are very mobile, and they could look to, if you try and put a dock up, they could look to immediately kill it. They just run in, kill it, and then that's it, and then back straight back out. So I think that's 100% a viable strategy. And I think Core going on the island, 100% is a way that he could win. And you can see his resources. I mean, he's working to it. It's a little bit slow, but he's working to it. You know it's in, you know what's happening. In fact, he's got six Bowchards in queue right now, and he's got quite the fleet coming out. This is beautiful stuff from Core. I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays this late game, but I, he, he is quickly becoming my favorite right now uh, for this game. We now see more walls coming up for Crackety here, up towards the north. Averly gonna be walk, uh, gonna be walling himself as well. The Great Wall of England is indeed coming through. And now it looks like Crackety is moving out on the map. He's got a whole bunch of knights. We are down to five players. Keep that in mind. We've lost Zerton. We've lost Leenok. We've lost Divine. And now Crackety looks to move in upon his Mongol enemy. The Mongol unable to make walls are able to make outposts. Do keep that in mind. We'll ride on board with Simtom and we'll see exactly what he sees as he's under attack in multiple different areas. He's going for an attack up on Core. Not Core. That's your Mongol brother. And all the villagers evacuate towards the outpost. You can hear the outpost firing off down upon the units below it. And that attack is really coming through. Simtom, it might be in trouble here. There's a lot of knights coming in underneath the town center, looking to actually strike down the villagers. Plenty of resources in the bank at the moment for Simtom. Not a lot of units in queue. He's going to continue rallying down towards the south side. You can see he's intent on, on continuing to hollow out that, pos that position. Up towards the north side, those knights are, or those lances finally going to get cleaned up. When it comes to the landmarks, they are getting chased away. Actually, I don't know what building that is. It's a prayer tent. It's a, it's a prayer tent. I can I can just tell by the hands. That's the only thing I know. Prayer tent going to go down with that. Relic's going to be dropped down as well, if, the, if there are any. And Simtom's landmark does go down. I'm not sure exactly which landmark it was, uh, but we, we've got the silver tree on the backside. In addition to that, we have the main town center, the white stupa. So it must have been the Kurultai. The Kurultai has gone down somewhere. We do finally see that prayer tent. He's going to go down with the three relics inside. And Simpton might be in trouble here. Crackety is absolutely rampaging through his base nonstop. We're now under attack on the south side as Averly also begins to turn his attention towards his opponent, his immediate neighbor. And really looks to glue down as much units as, or as many units as he can. We'll ride on board with Crackety. We'll see exactly what he's doing. He's got 133 villagers in the bank. Plenty of resources at the moment. A lot of, a lot of stone stacked up right there. Starting to worry me. I'm thinking maybe he's thinking about a bit of a wonder. But uh, a lot of knights on the backside here. He's done a great job in just cleaning this up and forcing the Mongol player. We've seen we've seen Simpton rampage through multiple different towns in the early game. Obviously, he cleaned up Leenok. And then he looked to even try and take out Puppypaw. Obviously, was repelled there. But unfortunately, met stiff resistance when he played up against Crackety. Looks like he's going to be able to clean this up. Elite Mangadai going to be coming out to help as well. Slowly but steadily, he's going to be able to recapture those relics. But Crackety does get cleaned up. And now reinforcements are going to be a factor for him. He's got 11 stables at the moment, Crackety does. So not going to be taking too long to get those reinforcements back out. And those elite knights, don't they? They look very similar to the French ones, I've got to say. What's the difference between those two? Let's see if we can find some French knights. Hmm. Oh, here we go. They look very similar. The Holy Roman Empire and the French knights... Wait, look how they change. They, they, their model really changes quite a lot when you zoom in on them. I mean, they, they should, right? Like, obviously, uh, we can't be, we can't be rendering the, the highest quality models from Max Zoom. It would be, it would be absurd. Ah, oh, but there are differences. You do see the differences. Look, look, look at the render. Look at the render. Okay, there we go. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Let's check in on Core. Let's see how he is doing. He's slowly becoming. He is slowly becoming the potential favorite for this game. Look at those resources, ladies and gentlemen. We might have a bit of a problem on our hands if you are not a fan of Core, because Core comes into this game being what many would say to be... Look, he's the wild card. And when I say wild card, I'm not talking about it in a good way. I'm saying, like, 
that guy core like the only reason he's here is because we had 32 places and viper cancelled on us so we were like ah, i guess we'll give one to core. i'm just kidding i'm just kidding for anybody who doesn't know bullying core is like that's a rite of passage right that that's how core that, that, that's how core likes to live cause cause actually a very sweet guy i, I got to meet him uh, when i flew over to germany uh he, we we got to share a, a currywurst together uh but uh but uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, let's talk less about core and, and more about this game that's happening right now because we've got our, our, ourselves a nice little forward base that's beginning to build and we've got ourselves a bit of a division. So obviously we know at this point in time that Puppy Paw, together with Avery, are somewhat in a team. We know at least it's a non-aggression pact. I can say that much. Or uh, I would be almost going towards team just simply because we've got Puppy Paw who definitely knows about this landmark and just allowed it to blossom behind his base. By the same token, I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on down here, but we had Simtom and Zerton who were in a definite alliance. We saw down on this gold mine towards the south, which the villagers have mined out, by the way. We saw down here that there was a delete on this outpost that was killing the villagers. But obviously, he was taken out by Puppy Paw. And now Puppy Paw going to be under threat down towards his south side as he tries to march some cannons through and now turns his attention. All the cannons are going to be going down. Arbolatria completely surrounded. A nice little pickup here for Symptom. This is definitely going to be something he's happy with. But remember, Puppy Paw as well as Averly are teamed up. So I wouldn't be surprised at the same time to see Averly look to move out. He's having a bit of trouble with these trebuchets. Sometimes it can be hard fitting them through the gates. And now he's going to be turning his attention towards it. I can't help but feel like trebuchets are a pretty good choice up against the Mongols just because of the Bombard Outpost or the Cannon Outpost. These guys do so much AoE damage. Whew, that is loud. That is a lot. Core up towards the north. Still, we don't have that wonder being built just yet, but I, I know Core can feel it. I know he can smell it. Core, I believe. I believe, Core. And now the outposts begin to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. It is happening. I can feel it. I can sense it. I know it. If, if I'm core right now, how, what am I doing? I, I think, yeah, you just outpost the whole island. You leave your town center and the wonder at the back in the corner. And then you outpost the whole thing. I think that's it. All right. Well, it looks like the trebuchets are just continued. Still a truce between these two guys. We'll take a look over at Puppy Paul's base and see what he's up to. In fact, we can check on the resources for each of these players and see where they're up to. So we got Puppy Paul playing out from the east corner currently. 37 minutes into this game, he's sitting on 100 villagers. So not a huge amount, but he is beginning to make trade ships. The trade ships are heading down towards... Oh my god, this is going to be dirty as heck. Oh my lord, this is going to be insane. Okay, you thought that... You thought this was crazy over here? Like... Okay, 62 gold. But th there was like down here, th there was a 340 trader that we had. This is going to be crazy. This is an eight player. Th this I think this is the biggest map that we can get. Simtom is building a wonder. Simtom is building a wonder. Is that the wonder? That's the wonder. That's the monument of the great Khan. Simtom, you got balls. You got cojones the size of grapefruits. <laughs> Let's just say that much. This is a ballsy move. This is a very ballsy move, Simtom. I'm going to say that much. I'm impressed. Now, uh, can he pack this up? Can he pack this up? That is the question. I don't know if he can pack this up or not. Okay, let, let's check this out. I want to see this and then we'll go check out Simtom. We'll see exactly what he's up to. I'm going with 587. What? What? No way. No way, dude. What? 522 stone a trip and it's got 392 wood and 261 gold <laughs> what no way that is insane he doesn't even have additional sales yet oh my god dude can you imagine if he went chamber of commerce if he goes chamber of commerce doesn't it go even higher than that what? Are you serious, dude? Are you serious? That is so many resources. What? That is ludicrous. Okay, we got we got units. So Puppy Paw already on the way to go deal with the Mongol scourge over on the west side of the map. We see that it got can it got it got cancelled. Okay, <laughs> Sim Tom was like, hold on a minute. I am not in a decent position here. I think I might put up some base defenses first. 
And we can hear Simtom is under attack from every single position. He's got plenty of resources in the bank, but he's only on 100 population at the moment. He's lost a lot of villagers. Now, there's been multiple attacks on Simtom. He's been a Mongol scourge throughout this early game. We saw him raiding multiple people, and Crackety hit back. And now Crackety comes in once again from across the map and says, I am going to take you out once again. So it seems like there might even be a bit of a non-aggression pact here between Crackety as well as um, as well as Averly. Or it might just be the fact that averly has got walls up, so Crackety can't really go through them. He goes around them and eventually he finds the Mongol player. But uh, a smart move there from uh, from Symptom to actually uh, cancel that wonder because if that wonder does go up, then he becomes a significant target and it's highly likely he just loses the game. But let's check in. We, we, we've talked a little bit about Crackity. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. 153 villagers over on that eastern side. No one really docking up at this... Actually, I say no one docking up. These are all docks. They don't look like docks, but they are docks. He's got docks ready. In the in the event that he needs to, he can move. He can make a move. He can make mogul moves if he needs to. Cleanup still happening. House still down here, chilling out. And now Core getting cleaned up as well. Poor Core. Poor Core always getting cleaned up. And now we'll take a look. Who have we got left? We've got I'm Averly. We'll take a look on board with him. He's got his nice secret little base over towards the west. Down towards the south, his dock is getting attacked slowly by an Arbola trio of puppy paw. And in this, and we hear bombards and Lancer masses beginning to build. He's sitting on 200 population, 126 and 74. A lot of trebuchets back here right now. He's got 12 trebuchets. And a new objective is to defend his wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a wonder that has been built. I don't know exactly where it is. Might be up towards the north. Nope, that is the wind guard. That is the wind guard that has been built. Where is the wonder? Wait. Okay, he didn't build it over there. Wait. Wait, wait, it was Core's wonder all along. Hold on a minute. I wasn't watching Core's perspective. Wonder tracker, it's Core. Wait, Simtom's also constructing a wonder. Is it? It's not the same one, is it? How many wonders have we got? We got a multi-wonder game again. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the land of core. We have got ourselves a little bit of an island wonder. That is correct. You're seeing it here first. We have got an island wonder. Core now sits. Oh my god, is there a land passage? Did is there is that a land passage? No way you can get across there. Surely not. When did that ha when did that did he build the wonder and then the land passage came? When did that happen? All right, well, Core's looking very strong. The Bow Chad's just chilling out. Interestingly, he's not being aggressive with them. If I was Core right now, I'd be pushing up and taking out all of the outposts on the shore. I would be taking out all of the docks and I would be preventing my enemy from getting out on, onto this position. That would be really, really key. And we now see that these docks are coming up. We've also got Carrick's coming out for Puppy Port and players are going to be turning their attention towards Core. Bombard outposts are going to be coming up in number. Keep that in mind that he's got plenty of stone in the bank from that white stupor, as well as his Uvu, which is continuing to pump that out. But the sea level is not rising, ladies and gentlemen. It does feel like the sea level may be going down. The landmark or the wonder has been built. We'll check in over. It looks like Symptoms might just be bugged out when he cancelled the, the, first, uh, the first wonder. It just says that he's constructing a wonder currently. Uh, but uh, but Core is looking very good over in that corner. He's going to be trying his best to hold on. Now, keep in mind, there are five people in the game when he puts that landmark down, which means he, uh, everybody, or he's going to be getting extra points if he's able to pull off a victory here. And now looking to push out, we see immediately Core takes down the first Carrick. Now the Hulk is going to get focused down. It's cannons out here as well. You can see the Bow Chads just moving through and going to be able to focus down those cannons on the shoreline. So much damage coming out from these guys, just obliterating absolutely everything. It is not even close. At the same time, towards that western side, we can see that the fire, the demo ships are starting to build up now for Karakity as well. He knows that there is a potential threat, and that threat is the monument of the Great Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. And it is scary because those bow chads are out and they're dancing. They are dancing very, very beautifully. Now, what kind of upgrades do we have here from Core? I think we've got everything except for piracy. Fair enough. I'll give it to him. Now, Core is, is continuing to make bow chats as well as springles. He's got a lot of springles out. He does have the upgrade as well, giving them a little bit of extra range. 
We hear him deleting things behind the scene as well. We're right on board with his perspective as siege workshops begin moving across the map right now. We can we actually see that all of a sudden symptom. Oh my lord, there's been so much damage done to the base right now of Averly. He's he's almost lost his entire base. I say almost lost his entire base. He's he's lost like four buildings. He's got a pretty big base, though. I wouldn't be too worried. Caught with the deer stones at the back here. He's always going to be safe, just chilling out. And I don't think Averly realizes. Oh, he does realize those are there. He knows those are there. Uh, so he can always look to try and take out that last position. And we can see players are now moving across the map, looking to try and set up that position over on that eastern flank. We'll ride on board for a second and see that there are 11 minutes remaining. So ladies and gentlemen, get your timers out. It is happening right now. Core is the potential champion here, or at least the victor in this game, and look, might look to pick up those extra points. That wonder, looking very strong. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's looking with that defense outpost up on the shoreline here. Core is definitely going for it. He started off on the island, and now all of a sudden the seawater, it's not rising. It is going down because we've got... I don't think you can walk across this, so I wouldn't be too fussed about it. But even if you could... Okay, Core now moving through, and this is exactly what he needs to do. you got to clean this out. you got to clean it out like you clean out your bedroom. Get that dirty laundry out of there. you got to be careful, though. Those guys are moving in with force, but unfortunately... They, uh, they also get killed with force. And Core looking insane. What an amazing spawn for Core here. This is incredible stuff. I can't believe this is something that we're getting to see right now. Core having an absolutely ludicrous spawn. Spawning in on the island. Getting a wonder in this, this ridiculous game. Trebuchet is coming out. But just remember, trebuchets have a bit of a hard time move, hitting moving targets. You want to know what moves? Ships, boats, they all move. Transport ships as well as Carrick's trying to get through to the top side. You're going to get focused down completely. We can see they all managed to sink. And now there is plenty of action coming out. Everybody trying to get docked down. And look at Core. He manages to hold the position. So the problem here for his enemies, what they need to do is they need to bring Siege up onto the edge here. It needs to be Springles. And then they're able to focus down these ships. Until then, they can't. And you can see he's having such a tough time with trebuchets. Please do you know what we could see? We could see players begin to say, okay, well, if I'm going to die or if I'm going to lose, I might as well kill other people with me and then look to try and take out their neighbors. But we can see the Siege Workshop is coming up here for Simpton. We'll ride on board with him and see where he's at. He's got 153 population at the moment. He's making more Siege Workshops on the front. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He needs to be going for Springles, not Bombards. Go for Springles. Springles have got that extra range and that's going to help you out so much against this and enable you to establish the beachhead. But then even once you establish the beachhead, you've then got to make it across the water, which by the way, if you hadn't realized, there's quite a lot of fishing. There's quite a lot of boats over here. And then in the event you make it across there, you then have to survive the outposts. And then you have to land. And then you've got to deal with the buggy landing, by the way. And then finally, you have to kill the monument of the Great Khan. So if you can manage to do all those things, well, you probably deserve to win. But until then, it's going to be very difficult for you. More Springles moving out now. We can see that the siege is coming onto the shoreline. Puppy Paw actually moving towards Crackety here. And I think we might have we might have our first I, I don't even know how to say it, but like you've got somebody. It's it's like almost mutually assured destruction, but it's not really. Look, they're they're, they're actually are they they're gonna kill Crackety? But Crackety's trying to kill the He's trying to kill Core! No! You can't kill Crackety! They're killing Crack he's killing Crackety! Don't kill Crackety! Crackety's killing Core! And now those bow chats trying to get out of there, they need to wisp out there real quick, smart. Down towards that south side, we'll check in and see more Carracks coming through. You could definitely, you know what? You could definitely sneak over on this backside. That is definitely unprotected. There is no way he would pick up on that. You just throw in a couple transport ships, you're going to be fine. Bombard's moving out. This is exa exactly what Simtom needs. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker. Eight minutes to go until that comes through. Springles on this front line. Don't, don't kill Crackety. Don't kill Crackety. You go back. This is his angle. You let him work that. Okay, good job. And now you can place docks down here. You've got the Springles out here to control that. Where are you going? Are you going to kill Crackety? <laughs> Look at Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw's like, yeah, well, if we're going to lose this, I might as well take you down with me. <laughs> He's actually going through. No, I, no, you can't kill Crackety like that. Look at he, Kraken, he's probably like typing in the chat, like, don't do it like that. Bombard's now coming out. Bombard's have got that reload speed. We see the first ones take it out. Look at the damage that comes out. A whole bunch of AOE going to be going down. Focusing that dock. 
Bow Chad's going to be coming out from Simtom as well. He's going to have to be forced back. You can see the Bombard's doing a great job of taking it down. And now Core is losing units like crazy. The Springhold's also firing in. The Beachhead has been established. Congratulations. You've managed to go this far. And now the question is whether you can complete that mission because that mission... Oh my lord. Averly has established his beachhead as well. They are slowly encroaching upon core. They are slowly encroaching on what appears to be 50 million bow chats. 19 of them in total. And now we see a bit of a movement. Carrick's coming up towards the north. Keep in mind these Carrick's won't be able to reach the monument of the Great Khan from here. A whole bunch of, of, uh, of outposts are garrisoned up with villagers in there. Probably ready to jump out and repair at a moment's notice. We can see Core's only got 439 wood, so it's not a huge amount. But now continuing to work down on this position down to the south side. All of the Springwoods firing off against the Bow Chads. Bow Chads going to be dealing out some decent AoE damage here, focusing down those docks. That's going to prevent any sort of attack from coming out, but the Springwoods doing a decent job. A lot of Bow Chads going down and doing a real number on them. You can see that one manages to survive. Uvu gets depleted as well. You hate to see it, but look at the Bow Chads now coming out for his opponent. Simtom looking good out here as well. Keep in mind, Core really needs to stay alive. We'll do a quick timer check and see exactly where he's at. He's at 5 minutes and 42 under attack on the south side. We can see that Puppy Paul trying to clear out this position, doing a decent job with it as well. Slowly but steadily pushing back these outposts. And with that, it's going to make it a little bit easier to come in towards this angle. We can see that there is still this dock down towards the south side. Carriage are coming in. I suspect these guys are coordinating. We've got trebuchets now beginning to fire upon these outposts. Up towards the north, we see more and more Bowchads looking to defend. And Core definitely looking to try and hold on to this position. The defense of Core is coming through. He is trying to do it. Core is no longer a meme. Core is now a meme lord. He has fully established himself. But we see triple docks coming out from Symptom. He is pu pushing Bowchads non-stop out towards this position. At the same time, towards the north, there's a Carrick moving up towards this landmark or towards this monument of the Great Khan, the Wonder. Still, those Carricks have to fall back. We don't see any transport ships coming out just yet. Trebuchet is still firing off towards this position on the south side. He's cleaned it up almost completely. The Bowchads now going to be looking to run a bit of a defensive line up towards that northern position. More Carricks continuing to come out. We've got four players working against Core right now. It is the single Core that's holding on. 114 population for him. He's trying his best to hold on. The single landmark or single wonder remains standing. Four minutes and 20 seconds remains. Nice. Very, very nice indeed. And now Core, he continues holding on. He's got that nice little formation. Going to begin opening fire. He's got to be careful though. A lot of these units are on low health. He manages to take out the double Carrick. Good little trades, but the bow chat numbers are starting to look good for Simtom. Simtom now all of a sudden starting to really look good here. Both of these guys do have their chemistry upgrade, so you can see they're going to be putting out a bit of extra damage here. Not a lot of upgrades for these Bowchads. Beachhead continuing to be pushed through. We've actually got ourselves a little bit of a... We got ourselves a trebuchet drop. Could potentially happen. Could look to snipe these down. Core could be in trouble if those trebuchets do make their way over onto the island. And keep in mind, Core is somewhat preoccupied to the north. He's really unable to get through here on this position because of the, the uh, Springles that are through here. And that could mean that the drop comes through. But now that Khan is going to go down, down towards the eastern flank. We do see another drop coming in over here as well. We've got multiple drops that are going to be coming through. Core in trouble here. This is not looking good. He's spread a little bit thin. He's tried his best to hold on and, and prevent those beachheads from being established. But now we've got ourselves the potential for drops as an 11th trebuchet gets on in to that, that, uh, that transport ship. And remember, if that transport ship somehow manages to go down... The, Spr the Springholds. The Springholds could cover this south side. If they did that, we got three minutes to go until one to victory. Core is holding on. He's on 14 Bowchads at the moment. He outnumbers his opponent quite significantly. We've got another drop up towards the north. 11 Springholds, 5 Bombards, and 27 Horsemen. These guys look to be coordinating. They're holding on, and now we've got the transport ships. Fake transports moving towards the front. Transport ships beginning to come in. It looks like the 12 transport ships together with the, the trebuchets are going to be coming in. 12 trebuchets immediately drop down and core going to be under attack now. The Springles focusing them down. Villagers need to move immediately to the Monument of the Great Khan as they all unfold their rocks. And the landmark, the wonder, it's down to 182 health. There's no way he does it. Poor core, poor core, he loses the wonder. Poor Core. The village is going to be trying, but unfortunately the trebuchets all get taken out. Core, no, and the wonder goes down. Core loses the wonder. 
at the 54th minute into the game. And with that, Core looks less likely to win this game than ever before as the Wonder goes down with less than three minutes remaining. The beautiful drop and more Bombards come in and they look to clean up that mess that was once known as Core. Poor Core. A beautiful attempt by Core there, but unfortunately for him, it was not his day. It was not his way. Another drop coming in, getting denied there. And the consequence of losing out on that position, had he had one or two bow chats over here, he might have been able to predict that, might have been able to stop it. But now we've got more Bombards coming out. These guys are looking very strong. And Core really holding on for dear life. Now attention gets turned to other places on this map. We've taken out the threat now. The threat was Core. Great. Now what? <laughs> now what? That is the question. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Because Core... I mean, he's looking to defend this position. He's stayed alive. He is singing the Bee Gees right now. He's got his landmarks. He's happy. He's camping. He did lose the sacred site, though. So he's going to need to reestablish that. But a beautiful attempt there by Core. One of the best attempts I've ever seen at a wonder. That was quite remarkable. Let's ride on board and we'll check in with each of our players. We've got Puppy Paw continuing down towards the east, who might be thinking a little bit similarly to Core. Uh, this it looks like a great position here for a wonder. Uh, he's also got the College of Artillery at the back, and this is very strategically placed. So really smart. A lot of people, as I as I mentioned before, uh, you know, will will forget about that. They will forget about the. Hold on, what do we got here? What do we got here? He's rewalling without the gate. Smart move. You don't want to have that gate. The gate is going to add uh, a di or reduce the health. Looks like the trading ship coming through now as well. He's got it on gold. Oh my god, Puppy Paul's got it on gold. Oh yeah, because he's got 20,000 stone just casually in the bank. Because why the heck not? Just just casually. He's got 784 stone. Well, 784 gold a trip here. This is, this is ludicrous. So uh, at this point in time, right? Like, does he just delete every economic unit, and make only military, and then build a wonder? Crackity here is building a wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. We've got wonder number two. It is the Great Palace of Flensburg coming down in the north of the map. Crackity believes that now is the time for him to go for that wonder. Indeed, I agree with that scout. There is a scout somewhere on the map screaming at the top of its lungs, and i got to agree with it. That is 100% right, scout. Multiple layers of walls coming up for Crackity. We'll ride on board with him and see exactly how he's doing as he looks to try and hold on. He's got trade ships coming down here as well. Under attack by that single Dow, or single light junk uh, from Simptom. Still, these bo this fishing boats are fishing. But Crackity's got a nice little forward base. First layer of walls, stone. Second, palisades. Third, stone. Fourth, also stone. Fifth and final layer of walls, stone. And we've got a, we've got a wonder cancel. We've got a wonder cancel up towards the north. He's decided it wasn't the right time. And you can see Core is almost very intent on causing havoc up there as well. He's coming back over to the shoreline. He's ready to, to cause damage. So crackety has gone for the one to cancel. A smart move from him. That would have made him a significant target. The right thing. Next person that we're going to ride on board is with Symptom. Over towards the western side of the map. Symptom currently sits on 113 villagers. Only 300 wood in the bank currently for Symptom. He is struggling with regard to wood. He's got a couple of wood lines that are available. He's yet to eat through them too much. He's dropped down a whole bunch of barracks down towards his south side. So there could be a potential offensive that he looks to go th go for over here. We'll see how he plays it though. We'll check in with, we'll check in with Averly now. Averly, plenty of production. 90,000 food in the bank. There is no shortage of food in his economy. No such thing as famine. It is not just potatoes we are eating today, ladies and gentlemen. It is wheat. There is plenty of it out and about. Take a look at that. <laughs> he's, he's walled in, Core. He's, he said, Core, you can't make walls, so I'll make them for you. Here you go, buddy. And then he kills the landmark. I like it. That's a smart move right there. Very, very cheeky. And now we start to see more farms coming down for Averly. He says, I've got 90,000 food in the bank. I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. So he makes some more farms. A smart move. Crackity again going for that wonder. You can see that like when when, it, when Crackity is going for it, he, he, it's all about timing. He he's waiting for other people to 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 fight it out, to to break it out. And you can see it's a very short distance between Core and the wonder. Is is Crackity going for a fake out here? This is the, this is the question, right? Like, w what is his game plan here? Because if we if we ride on board with Crackity, you can see he's sitting at max population at the moment. 
If we take a look at his at his village account, he's only on 84, but he's got 115 military pop. So the question is, what's the strategy that he's going for? Is this actually going to complete or is he going to cancel it? Because he's canceled it once before. We may potentially see the wonder victory attempt here as we enter into the hour mark. There appears to be at this point, no clear victor. When it comes to score, we've got Puppy Paw, who is currently running in second place. Symptom currently on first place on 22,000. Crackety on 16,000. Averly on 15,000. And then finally, Core, barely on 9,000. But it's Core. It's Core. It's like, it's, that's pretty normal for Core. Don't worry about him. It, we, we let him play with us just because, like, his mum writes us messages and says, like, hey, let my son play with you. The, the, you stop excluding him. All that kind of stuff. So we, we just got to let him play with us. I mean, with us. But he can also play with her. Oh, God. I put my foot in. It's his stepmom. It's his step. It's not his real mom. Uh, <laughs> we got walls coming up now for Crackity, though. He's looking to wall out his enemy. And uh, and prevent this from uh, from any any push coming through. Keep in mind, there are a lot of bow chats here. So maybe Core has come to some sort of agreement with Crackity. Like, hey, uh, if, if you let me... If you let me win, I will let you... I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, what could potentially be the deal that Core would willingly say yes to. He's like, no, you you tried to kill me. Like, surely he's just going to break through. You know, Core could even say to them, like, hey, if you guys want to come up here, like, there's a way through. I'll, I'll break it for you. And then he, he can just break through the wall. But now we've got attacks already coming through. So keep in mind, Crackety's wound up. It's got 14 minutes left on it. We've already got the first layer of wall going down. But now more stone walls beginning to come up. Bombards on the backside as well. Palisades are down. These bombards should be able to fire down upon this battering ram and almost one shot it. Now remember, Cracky's in a decent position. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the game. We said, you know, when it comes to who's got the best position geographically, it's got to be Core and Crackity. Because Crackity's got this nice little corner up towards the north, a very controllable beachhead. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Puppy paw, um... That's a lot of cannons. That's a lot of cannons. I'm not sure. Is this Puppy Paw or is it Beastie Cutie? It could be Beastie playing on Puppy Paw's account. It, it seems like an abnormally large amount of siege for someone who's not Beastie. No, cannon. Stop shooting the... Oh, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you've done this. More bow chads coming out though. I uh, will take a look over at Puppy Paw and see how he's doing. Because he is indeed... He is Richie Rich right now. He's got so many resources in the bank. Uh, he, he's got... He's only on 87 villagers, but those villagers... I don't even know what they're doing. Uh, wait, are, are the villagers only trade... Does he only have trade ships? He's, it says he's got 29 trade ships. Or maybe he's just got villagers that are like building or something. Bombard's gonna be trying to break through that wall. Or rather, cannons. We can... Let's... I, I'm curious to see exactly how the cannons do up against these Arbola Tria. Or should I say... Uh, I'm curious to see how, how these... Uh, how these archers do up against these bombards. Uh, let's, let's have a look and see. Because I suspect it's going to be a quick, decisive victory for the bombards. But it doesn't seem to be the case, actually. He's overwhelming him pretty decently. You would have expected the bombards would have just destroyed all of this. But I think they're focusing... A, a lot of their fire is just focused on, like, one or two units. And because they're all firing at the same time, it's not even, like... It's not even close. And he's just eating through them. Like, th there are so many. Every single one of these units is a thousand resources that just go down. And can you imagine if he had, like, one or two Reboldequins in here? It would all be dead. But Crackety holds by a mile. It wasn't even close. I, I, I legitimately thought that those cannons were going to destroy the Holy Roman Empire. But they didn't. They did not. It wasn't even close. Crackety holds the first push. Second push coming in over towards this western flank. Still yet to be dealt with by Crackett. He had more pressing issues, in particular the Bombard or the Cannon Army. But uh, but I think the, the big thing is we're going to need a forward base. That's the thing. If Puppy Paul wants to really press this issue over on the northern side, he's going to need a forward base if he wants to deal with it. Plenty of resources in the bank for him as well. Yeah, more than 100k. But now look at a hold on. Springles on the backside as well as the Bombard. He's more than capable of cleaning up this first wave that's coming in from Averly. So Averly's going to have to try it again. We can see there's there's something under attack over here. I don't know exactly what is attacking it, but it, it does... Oh, the Bombard emplacement. The cannon emplacement. It's killing the mining camp slowly. I say slowly, it's not slowly at all. That is a very quick kill. 
Now reinforcements are coming in. Crackety's got a lot of units here. I'm actually liking Crackety's position more and more. What are his resources looking like? He's got 50,000 resources. What is his production looking like? Production's on 53. It's not terrible. That's pretty decent production, actually. 16 uh, barracks, 21 stables. That's a decent amount of production. I think he's in a good spot here to win this. Crackety going for a victory. This could be it. This could be it. A lot of villagers now moving forward for Averly. Begin focusing down the horsemen. Villagers with their extra plus three damage. They're dishing out eight damage a pop right now. A huge amount of damage. Going to be able to one-shot these horsemen. That is that is impressive. And they've locked them in. They locked them in. They said, hey, you ain't going anywhere. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. Villagers completely eat all of those horsemen alive. Vils are indeed overpowered. Nerf them in battle. Crackety under attack from multiple angles now. Crackety looking to try and take out these Bombards. Bombards going to be turning their attention towards Crackety. Simptom helping out in this position. We'll double check and see if anyone else has built a wonder. No one else at this point. Crackety on nine minutes to go. Not too long to go. And Crackety looking to try and rewall. We can see the villagers moving out. But it looks like uh, Averly is going to be able to drop down that, uh, that outpost before that rewall can get up. Smart moves from him. But there's plenty of units out at this point in time over on that western front. But remember, Crackety has got a very decent position to hold. It's very easy for him to control the narrative here. It, it is a short, easy route for him to reinforce. He doesn't have a lot of fronts. He doesn't have to deal with fronts to the left, fronts to the right. He's got one front. That is simply it. So it makes it very easy. But now trebuchets on the backside. Six trebuchets to be exact. Going to be able to focus down these bombards. And you can see they have to fall back because there is too much damage that comes out from these guys. 130 damage a pop. And so they do indeed fall back. Over on the eastern side as well, we see plenty of bombards beginning to come through. Puppy Paw yet to establish a bit of a front. We can see that when it comes to actual forward bases, he doesn't have anything. Uh, so Puppy Paw, ideally, you'd love to see him bring up just a whole bunch of villagers, drop down a forward base right here, and then be able to funnel those units in. But Krakeny now trying to hold on. Bombard's looking to, to, uh, to take out their counterparts. Villagers moving forward as well, getting out their shivs, getting out their torches, and turning their attention towards those Bombard's. Horsemen are going to be trying to work their way through that. I'm curious whether horsemen actually get a bonus against villagers, against English villagers, because technically they are ranged. That's a good question. You know what? That, that would make them overpowered at raiding. Don't do that. The English would suck. <laughs> that would be terrible for the English. But now a nice little bit of a front line here is going to provide these Bombard Cannons all that they need uh, to, to really force that DPS. And you can see they're going to be firing non-stop towards that, also taking out a couple of the Lancers in the process. Nice little hold down here, but a lot of men-at-arms actually coming out against Crackety. This could be difficult for him to hold. Keep in mind, he's got how many minutes? Seven minutes and 43 seconds to go. A lot of layers of defense back here. The question is, where is Core? Don't worry. Core is twiddling his thumbs as usual. It is classic Core. Men-at-arms going to be making their way through, but keep in mind those men-at-arms are going to be going up against some of the strongest horsemen in the world. Those are Holy Roman Empire horsemen. They're not particularly that... They're not really that strong. Uh, but... Uh, some, some interesting movement there from the Spears. A lot of men-at-arms here. I'm going to take a look at Averly and, and see exactly what he's got going out. He's got only 35 villages that remain 160 military. That is a fair amount of military. Let's ride on board and just double check. 102 men-at-arms, 18 trebuchets. Something tells me if 18 trebuchets aren't enough, then I feel like no amount of trebuchets is enough. But these guys all working together to try and take down that one mutual threat. And now the question is... Who, who places down that next wonder? Because that next wonder, maybe that's the one that seals the deal. We've seen one wonder come out already this game. The second wonder already coming down. It is not the prayer hall of Ukba. It is not the great... What is it? The great Khan or the great palace of Khan? No, no, no. It is, it is something a little bit different. It is the great palace of Flensburg today. But now continuing to move forward. We've got Avalu, who's, who's slowly but steadily running out of food. We'll tune back in with Crackety and see exactly what he's up to. He's under attack up towards the north. It looks like a little bit of a hole has been break, broken through up towards this position, but I think you can probably ignore it. Crackety down on of resources, and with that, reinforcements are going to be a lot more difficult to come by. You can see he's definitely running out of steam at this point, so may have misjudged the situation. Still got six minutes to go, and just remember, with the trebuchets, eventually you make it towards this position and you're going to be able to clean this up and something tells me in the event that you lose this you're probably going to be losing all your landmarks on the way as well and that's going to make it even harder for you and highly likely that you do get knocked out of this game we did see that core managed to stay alive earlier in the game and now core <laughs> core what are you doing core what are you doing core 
I have some suspicions. I think you might be even thinking about targeting your Mongol opponent. As, as soon as this goes down, I reckon Kaw's going straight for Simtom. There's no way he's getting through stone walls. So he knows he won't be going there. And look at the keeps that are coming up. This could be ridiculous, in fact, over for Puppy Paw. Still trying to hold on. Crackety here is defending. There's not long left on his, la on his wonder. We'll take a look now. He's down to five minutes to go on the wonder. Bombard's still yet to make too much progress through here. He's sitting on 26,000 food at the moment, but not a lot of resources left remaining. He's got a couple of villagers doing long distance mining across the map right now. It's not going to be enough wood to support spearmen or horseman production, that is for sure. Men at Arms going to be coming out. He's got a single relic in there. Enemy is attacking Crackety's landmark. I'm not sure exactly which one or where it is. Uh, is it the Palace of Swabia? Indeed, it's the Palace of Swabia. That's a lot of trebuchets. That's a lot of trebuchets. I, I, Averly is definitely a trebuchet enjoyer. He, he's a man who enjoys trebuchets. And with that, they look to march their way through the base towards Crackety's final destination. Trebuchet is looking to unpack, but I think he's just going to march his way through in between all the buildings. And you've got to be careful doing this type of thing because you could potentially get swept up. And we could see a single man at arms moving in and blocking the entire line of trebuchets. And now he deletes all of the buildings around those trebuchets and begins to run towards them. At the same time, we've got to push over towards the eastern flank, but it's these trebuchets he's got to worry about. These guys don't have to think about walls. They don't have to worry about walls. And he turns his attention, focusing on the trebuchets. The men-at-arms on the backside, completely stuck. Trebuchets firing down upon the men-at-arms. Enemy has destroyed Crackety's landmark. It's going to be that first town center that goes down. He's making his way towards that final wall. We can see that Crackety is really holding on, but all those trebuchets are going to get forced back. Or rather, all those reinforcements are going to get forced back. Crackety on 58. Population, zero wood, zero gold. There is nothing in the bank. He is slowly but steadily running out of steam as finally that stone wall gate is going to get broken down. And with that, the floodgates have now opened. Ladies and gentlemen, get in there. It is time for Crackety's destroy Symptoms wonder ladies and gentlemen it is the th ladies and gentlemen the third wonder in the game has coming up just as the second one is going down we have got wonders out the wazoo and we have got crackety here who is going to be crackety there unfortunately for him because i suspect the puppy paw will be taking no prisoners he looks to take out that that wonder indeed it goes down he actually leaves the landmarks for now oh I, I don't think Averly is leaving the landmarks. Oh, I think Averly's going for the kill. Aver does Averly know where the last landmark is? I think he does. I think he does. Averly's going to get some points in here. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got two points going over towards Averly because Puppy Boar has decided to be a, a, a very... What's the word? Boom. There, there he goes. Good night, sweet prince. Crackety here is tapped out. Averly claims the two points and Puppy Paw misses them. Puppy Paw very easily could have gotten that, I think. But uh, yes, a very polite Puppy Paw right there saying, I will permit you to live for an extra six seconds. And then there were four. We have Core over towards the northeast side of the map on his own little island doing his own little thing, which we'll ride on board with him and see exactly what he's up to. So Core is being very sneaky. He's been very, very sneaky. We've got 124 of the world's finest horsemen. Slowly but steadily making their way towards that front. When it comes to village account, Kaur sits on 16 villages. Not a whole lot. Not a, not a huge amount of villages. Let's just put it that way. He's intent on causing some sort of havoc this game. Realistically, though, I mean, let's say he wanted to kill Puppy Boar. How could he do it? He could run through here. He could run through here. Okay, then he gets boiling oiled one, two, three times and runs into stone walls. Um, and the, the final landmark is back here as well. The College of Artillery. So you can't really... You, you can't really snipe Puppy Paw. Okay, let's say you wanted to kill I Am Averly. Stone walls again. All the way around. There is an opening. But for the most part, those stone walls are completely encompassing core or in, uh, completely encompassing Averly. So the final target, which I suspect he may be going for, is going to be Simtom. Now, Simtom's landmarks. Let's take a look and see if we can spot them all. We've got the Monument of the Great Khan, which isn't actually a landmark. It is a wonder. We've got the Silver Tree. 
We've got the main town center. We've got the white stupa. And we've got the coral tie. So we've got all four landmarks relatively close together. And now Symptom looks to try and hold against his enemies. The wonder tracker indicates there's 12 minutes remaining. He begins to clean up. We'll take a we'll ride on board with Symptom and see how he's doing. He's got 50,000 gold in the bank. 41,000 food. That is plenty. That is plenty. And now that forward base in the middle is coming down. And puppy... Po oh, oh my lord. Core, that is a lot of horsemen. Let's see what Core can do with it. Because just remember, Core has only got 16 villagers. So he's literally spent the last 10 minutes, the last 12 minutes making these horsemen. Ever since he died, this this has just been his goal. And I guess what, what is interesting to me is that a single trade ship from Puppy Paw makes more than Core's entire economy in like six minutes. I'm not even kidding. I, I wish I was kidding. I'm not. Is he trading with a neutral dock? He is too. Oh, with a uh, with a dead player's dock. Look at that. He could be just, just be trading to here. In fact, he could be trading even further. He could trade over to here. God, could you imagine getting that? That'd be wild. Core now running in. A lot of horsemen out here for Core. Now you got to be careful. You got to be extra careful going up against these Mongol players because one of the things they love to do is spam these towers, these outposts, and they get the bombard emplacement on them. And they just absolutely shred you. Thought, you thought boiling oil was bad. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen absolutely nothing yet. And now it looks like Simtom going to be able to clean up Puppy Paw on this south side. A lot of Mangadai out here as well. These guys deal a lot of damage. No Khan to be seen in this battle. You can see the majority of these Lancers are going to get cleaned up by the hand cannoneers. Slowly but steadily working towards it. Culverin on the backside as well. A single cannon going to be out here. Decent little cleanup. Where's Core at? Where's Core at? Oh, Core. Where, what are you doing, Core? You know if Core gets behind these walls? Oh my god. What if Core chops through? If Core chops through. One. Two. Three. Where's the King's Palace? Am I missing it? I don't know where the King's Palace is. And if I don't know where it is, Core doesn't know where it is. Huge amount of bombards now coming out for Symptom as well. He's under attack on multiple fronts. He's doing well to defend, but look at the trebuchets on the backside. Sitting behind the stone wall, that's 18 trebuchets. Managing to take out all these bombards, but now the horsemen as well as the uh, the Magadai are going to be able to break through. Men at arms together working with those longbowmen. Going to be looking to fire down upon their units. Trying their best to hold on. Core just chilling out once again. Oh, Core. Oh, you sneaky Core. He's doing a chop through. He's found the one weakness. There is a wall that extends the entirety of this base. With the exception of a single wood line. And a single tree which has now been chopped through. Ladies and gentlemen, Core is going to be looking to try and dish out some damage. I just remembered where the King's Palace is. Oh, the King's Palace is dead. Oh, the King's Palace is dead. The King's Palace is dead. Averly might die here. Core can break through. It could be a two versus one. Core was in it all along for the long game. Everybody thought Core was making a play with the wonder. The real play here were the friends we made along the way. All the bombards coming out. That's that's got to be like stone. Yeah, that's got to be the double production bombards, right? We'll ride on board with Symptom and see. Yeah, he's making. Look at this. He's got so much stone in the bank. He's making bombards by the twos. Core still yet to break through. A lot of units just chilling out. You can you can suspect that Averly is just looking to try and push in against his opponent. Enemy attacking Symptom's landmark. We'll take a look now over towards Symptom's base. I suspect he might be in a bit of trouble. Indeed he is. Culverin as well as the Bombard Cannons moving in towards his south side looking to clean it up. Symptom trying to focus his efforts towards the north. And now down towards the south these armies begin to move. He should be able to clean this up. He's got a lot of cavalry in here, a lot of resources in the bank. The Khan does go down. The core still sits, still waits. He says, hey man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just chopping wood. Don't mind me. Meanwhile, the army is assembling inside the stealth forest. Symptom looking like he's going to be able to hold down on this position. We're down to seven minutes to go for Symptom. He's got an extensive base continuing down towards the south side as well. He's got barracks back here. Unfortunately for him, he is playing Mongols, so it means no walls 
Forward base continuing to come up now for Puppy Paw as he begins pushing through. He's cleaned up the majority of the army here. And now moving forward to the base of Simtom. But Simtom is fighting on multiple fronts. The first front. It's going to be difficult for him to hold. But still, we wait for Core. Core has the potential to change the game here. If Core dives in too early, it could mean that Averly backs off or gets pushed out. But at the same time, Simtom looks to be holding 2v1 at this point in time. You can see he's got the advantage and he's got reinforcements. He's got so many resources in the bank. Simtom starting to look stronger by the minute. And the question is whether Core goes in for a snipe on Averly and looks to claim additional points or whether he simply runs past all of them and goes for the monument of the Great Khan. But there are a lot of Bombard outposts that are here. In fact, there are 36 of them. We take a look at the villager and you can see that there are 99 outposts made, each one of them equipped with, with cannon emplacements. These guys are fully upgraded. Core still not on the move. Could be waiting until the last second. Two landmarks going down. In fact, this could be this could be bad. That's two landmarks going down. There is the final landmark up towards the north. Do not worry. The Wingard Palace is very far away from the action. The core may know about it. That could be the difference. Core may know about it. Who knows about this position, in fact? That is the question. I don't think anybody knows about it. No one else has got docks. Down towards the south action continues. Still a bit of a push. Beautiful cleanup coming through. Symptom just doing a great job of holding. 2v1. Not only is he holding 2v1, but he's pushing at the same time. The Bombards being so effective. He's got that double production from the Bombards continuing to just funnel out Bombards non-stop. And now really pushing in on his opponent here. Core, for the moment, just chilling out, still biding his time. Waiting. He wants to see what's going to happen. He's got 11,000 stone in the bank right now. Core just chilling out. He's got he's got outposts in the enemy base. He's continuing... Oh. He's looking for the he's looking for the la the landmark. He's looking for the final landmark. He's he's just checking to see how it's going. He's looking to test. And now the now the Mongols are on the move. Core is looking to enter the base of Averly. The question is whether he goes past it without collecting his two hundred dollars, or whether he looks to collect his two hundred dollars. That is going to be the question. The horsemen begin to move at the same time down towards the south. Cannon numbers are very significant. Puppy Paul looks like he might have won this battle down towards the south, but there are plenty of lancers. At the same time, Core is hunting. He smells it. All the horsemen have got their lancers out. They're looking to try and find that landmark. They want to know where it is. We'll look with Core for a second and see if he can spot it. Another outpost goes down. He still doesn't know where it is, but he should know that the trebuchets are coming from the north. And from that, you can basically follow where the wind guard is. You can determine based on the trebuchets where they are coming from. And now immediately we see Averly say, no, 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 Core, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, Core. And Averly might be in trouble because Core is running straight for that landmark. He knows at the same time down towards the south side, we continue to see the bombards continuing to push through Puppy Paw looking to try and finish off Symptom. He's got wonders. He's got landmarks. And now he manages to get through. He's got the first ones through. Looks like he's going to be able to get up a couple of, of them on the side. And now managing to take down that wall segment. If he gets down this wall segment, it could be a good game. Indeed, all the horsemen make it through. He's, he's trying his best to run through there. A single trebuchet. Oh, my Lord. A single trebuchet does come out from the Wingard army. But this is the last landmark. And two points almost certainly going to be awarded over to Core at this point as he tries his best to knock down that landmark. And indeed, he does. Core claiming two points and Averly is tapped out from this game at the one hour and 23 minute mark at the same time towards the south we see the bombard cannons continuing to aggress puppy paw looking very strong and i wouldn't be surprised if we see a landmark or a wonder come down for him as well just to secure this game out core definitely in a strong position but it definitely doesn't seem like it's all over just yet we've still got the wonder that could potentially go down or could potentially remain up as those bombards continue moving through. We'll ride on board right now with Symptom and see how his defense is holding up. He's down to 2,000 food right now. Things are not looking good for our last Mongol player, rather our second last Mongol player. We still got two of them in the game. Huge mass of bombards as well as Springwoods coming out now for Symptom. He's looking to try and hold on in this position. Keep in mind that behind this, the monument of the Great Khan stands. Symptom's landmark has been killed. The last landmark sits at the very back here. Just remember, 
So even if he loses three landmarks, he's still got that fourth one that will keep him safe. But these bombards are going to continue working through this very, very quickly. Springwood's got to be careful here. These guys have got 13 range. Ideally, he'd like a few more of those Springwoods out to just to try and deal with this. The bombard number's looking very, very healthy for Puppy Paw. We'll ride on board with Core and see exactly what he's up to. You just know that Core's always doing something sneaky. And now Core, it's two minutes until that that wonder. Core, you probably got to make up your mind, Sonny. You're going to help out Puppy Paw, or are you just going to let him lose? He's going to try his best to move in there, and now those Bombards continue moving forward. Springwood's managing to take out the majority of the cannons. Bombards continuing to fall back, but he could go for a dive at this point, and I think that might be what Puppy Paw does do. He moves forward now with the, the, the Bombards, and indeed looking to try and take them out. You can see the way he's moving forward. The Bombards need to turn around. If the, In this position, I suspect they might even just be able to take down that Monument of the Great Khan now, looking to focus it down. Indeed they are! They're focusing it down. He's going to be moving it down. It's going to go! It's one hit! It's down! It's dead! Two Bombards remain, and that is how close it was. Good Good game over for Symptom. He manages to hold, but at what cost? The beautiful dive right there by Puppy Paw manages to take out that wonder with less than two minutes remaining. And this game continues on in an absolutely ludicrous fashion. Because remember, Core still remains somehow in this game. And there is the potential that he might actually go on to win. We could see... Imagine if... Would, do we dare see... You could. He's saving up for it. Core is currently saving up for his uh, his next wonder. Good news is, uh, if you guys are still watching this in 2026, it will be ready. Uh, he's got four villages on wood at the moment. Uh, the, <laughs> at this point in the game, there are a lot of horsemen out. And we might see Core running in for a second kill right now. Core is really looking to pick up points. He actually spots out a whole bunch of, of these bombards, but I don't even think he's interested in it. He's just going to run past. He says, hey, I know where the last landmark is. Don't mind me, friend. I'm just here for the points. And indeed, he goes past this. And with this, he's not only going to be able to seal out the second position, but he would be able to seal out an extra two points for himself. Falls back and realizes that he can't take those bombard cannons. Needs a little bit more help from his green friend, Puppy Paw. You can see they're not engaging each other, dealing with a mutual threat. Once again, Symptom with the highest, or rather, second highest score in this game. But Puppy Paw obviously able to convince Core in this situation that Puppy Paw is not the threat. You'd be a little bit ludicrous to not think so. Puppy Paw on the other side. Let's take, take a look and see exactly what he's running. Uh, we'll take a look. And Puppy Paw, he's sitting on 9,000 food. So not a huge amount of food in the bank, but... He's, he's, all of his villagers, I mean, they're just chilling out for the most part. Now looking to try and finish it off. We see that up towards the north, White Stupor has managed to make its way up here. He's also got the Silver Tree. This could be a good game right here as Symptom going to be under attack. The Bombard's continuing to fire off, but I don't think these horsemen are going to be able to make it. Sure, he's going to be able to take out the first landmark, but the second landmark's going to be A-OK. -okay. He manages to take down the Vroom Vroom car with 29 health. Indeed he does, but there's only three horsemen that remain. And now you can see why those Bombard outposts are so damn effective. White or Silver Tree going to be able to pack up and move its way away. But the cannons continue looking to defend. He's slowly but steadily making his way through all of these units. Silver Tree is packed up. He's trying. He's trying to push through in time. He knows that it's back there. But at the same time, he's a little bit walled in. He's going to be able to run it around the edge of the map if he does so, please. But from here, you can't help but feel like Puppy Paw is in an absolutely dominant position. He's sitting on maximum population. He's got trade for days. And some of the best trade in the game. 519 gold. A return. I'm surprised Age of Empires 4 even has integers that high. That is ludicrous. And look at the cannon mass that we are starting to see. 26. And big core coming in with a raid right now. That is a good sign or a bad sign. I'm not too sure exactly what that means. But now we've got the, this potential push that continues coming on. Where did that last landmark go? He's making a run for it. He's making a run for it. The silver tree at the north side. He's going to be blasting a wall right now. Simpton blasting a wall through the walls of, of Averly, who has died. And with that, he takes his town center, his villagers, and his silver tree through. It's absolutely terrible right now. He's losing the entire base. And it looks like Puppy Paw has now just realized exactly what has happened. He's realized there has been a great escape. And with that, he heads towards the north side. We could ha even have a dock with a transport ship and he moves over towards this northern position. That could be an option. But at this point in the game, Puppy Paw is in such a good position that I fail to see how anybody could win. And Puppy Paw actually dropping down to wonder. Notre Dame gets dropped down. That is going to be the first, second, third, fourth 
completed wonder that we are seeing this game. And I don't think there's any way that these two guys can take it from him. Now, one of the other things to note is that there are, are additional points that are awarded to players if they are winning with a wonder victory. But it's only if there are four or more players in the game. As we've got three players that remain in this game, there wouldn't be any additional points awarded to Puppy Paw here for this wonder. And as a result, it means that, sure, he might get a victory through it, but he's not going to get any extra points from this wonder. So that incentivizes him. It says, hey, if you want to get extra points, go and kill your enemy. And obviously, he's struggling a little bit with that as the uh, the bombard cannons continue chasing through the base here. Puppy Paw is looking for his enemy. Town Center going to be making its way out. We'll jump on board with Puppy Paw as, uh, as he does spot out a couple of those, uh, those villagers. He's got them in line of sight. He is really chasing him with the, to the extent uh, that he can possibly do it. And now that single town center, not going to get blown up. He, he clears it up. He clears the way for that town center. Wait, is, is he just letting Simtom live? Simtom immediately packs up. Yo. No. Okay. All right. You, you may go on town center. Live a life that is long and fruitful. And I encourage you to, to live your best life. Uh, but core up towards the north. Core hunting as well. Hold on a minute. Where is it? I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it's up here. It's up here between the walls. They're both hunting for him. They both want that last point. He's following the town center wagon? I'm not sure exactly what's happening. He's letting... He's like, lead me to your people. Lead me to your people. And I, and I will show you the light. I will show you the way. So at this point, looking at the scores, obviously Puppy Paw in the lead by a mile. Simtom coming in second. Core coming in third at this point. And Puppy Paw just looking very strong. I mean, he's got so many walls up in this point. You, and the keeps. And remember, he's got infinite stone. That is the big thing about French. I think I'm going to have to reevaluate my, my tier ratings right now because if French can have infinite trade or infinite stone through a trade like this, this is absolutely busted. Uh, and hold on, Simtom was... Symptom was, Symptom was eliminated. Puppy Paw killed Symptom right there at the end. He managed to do it. And with that, Core is going to seal up the second position. And he taps out. Good game. Puppy Paw is... He is victorious. Congratulations. Go over to Puppy Paw. What an absolute game. Wonders coming out the wazoo. Killing non-stop alliances early on in the game. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. An absolute blast of a game that one was. We had wonders coming up for everybody. We saw Crackity go for a wonder. We saw Core go for a wonder. We saw Sim Tom go for a wonder. And finally, we saw Puppy Paw going for a wonder. We had, had some early losses there with uh, with uh, Zerton, as well as Lenok going out very early. And of course, Divine, unfortunately, losing as well. But... Uh, it was, it was impressive stuff. We did see I am Averly also hit a villager peak there. A beautiful villager peak, in fact, of uh, of what, what is close to about 150. What an absolute game. Uh, we've got to take a look at the stone count there because uh, if we have a look at, uh, at Puppy Paw, look at this. Puppy Paw up on over 20,000 stone. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed the second game in the Outback Octagon. It's been an absolute blast casting this and uh, I hope you're looking forward to the next one.